now that we have the PDF of the sine wave, we can go back to the formula for the average power. And then we have that the sine wave goes from minus one to one, and we will replace the PDF here times x squared, and we will obtain uh, the expectation of the signal power of a sine wave. So this is uh, what we are having here. We're using sin pi. So this is the x squared times the uh, PDF of the sine wave, and then we're computing this integral. And we have that the expectation of the signal power of a sine wave is one divided by two or 0 0.5. Okay. As the sine wave is not a probabilistic function, but it's a deterministic function, we can also simply directly compute the power of um, the sine signal over t and then take the average of um, over at least one period of the sine function. So this is what we are doing here. So we are computing um, the, uh, the power, the expectation of the uh, sine wave power. So when we solve this uh, integral here, so it's important to, to um, remember this trigonometric identity that makes it easier to uh, reach this result. And then we know that the uh, cosine integrated over a complete period becomes zero. And we have the same value of one divided by two. So we calculate that the expectation of the signal power for a sine wave in two different ways. Uh, we used here this um, solution for a deterministic function, and we also used using the PDF of a sine wave. Yeah. So another thing to have in mind is that in this case, we, we see the sine wave from a minus one to one, the amplitude from minus one to one, but uh, what to do when we have different amplitudes? So let's say that the amplitude is a divided by two, so it goes from minus a divided by two to plus a divided by two, and then we'll have that the expected power is a squared divided by eight. So if we replace here in this formula, now it's not the sine anymore, but it's the a divided by two times the sine. So this is what we're doing here uh, in sin pi, and then we will compute this um, integral, and we find that the result is a squared divided by eight. Yeah? And this leads to a signal to noise ratio of a squared divided by eight divided by the step size squared divided by 12. So this is a signal power divided by the noise power. And we have uh, the signal to noise ratio of three times a squared divided by two times step size squared. And like we've been doing before, uh, if we consider that the sinusoid is at full range, and then we have the, the um, amplitude a, uh, the full range is equal to two to the power of the number of beats times the step size. And if we replace here, here we have that the signal to noise ratio is 1.5 times two to the power of two times n. And in dB, we have here this result. So we still have this n times 6.02 dB, but the, um, the signal for a sine wave gives us a boost of a 1.76 dB in signal to noise ratio. Yeah, so it's not a uniformly distributed signal, but it now it's a sine wave. Yeah, so we see that our rule of thumb uh, still applies here for each beat, so we get 6 dB more, but for a sine wave, we still have this. Um, this boost of 1.76 dB. So here we're just using sin pi to have the equation for the signal to noise ratio, and then we replace the um, step size and the full range here, this equation here, and then we have as the same result. So it's uh, three divided by two is 1.5 times two to the power of two n. So this is the equation for the signal to noise ratio for a sine wave uh, with uh, an amplitude that goes from minus a divided by two to plus a divided by two, meaning that there is a full range 